Shinsengumi, NHK historical drama, DVD series review. Right, so this is part of the scripted review series in which I go back and uh, look at some of the old blog posts I've written over the years which review various things. And I've been trying to make YouTube videos out of them for whatever it may or may not be worth, uh, see if anyone's interested. This one is going back to 2008 when I was still living in Japan. I, I'd been living in Japan for several years and uh, had made successes learning Japanese on and off. Like I'd study hard for a period and then I wouldn't study at all for a period and then I would study hard for a period. But one of the things which I tried to do, you know, one of the best ways to learn a language, especially when you're living in the country, is just watch the local TV. I mean, it's such a valuable source of input. So one of the things which I really should have been doing a lot more than I was, was just having the TV on in Japanese all the time. But to be perfectly honest, 90% of what was on TV in Japan really didn't interest me. Uh, you know, part of it maybe was I didn't give it a fair shake, but uh, if, if, if you've lived in Japan, you know, maybe the style of TV is different than a Western style of TV. Or I don't know, maybe it's changed since 2008. So what I ended up doing instead is going to the video store and uh, finding series that I was interested in and then renting them and, and working through them. And uh, thus far, I've, I've reviewed a number of them here. Uh, Romeo X Juliet, an anime series. Mysterious Cities of Gold, another anime series. Uh, the Rose of Versailles, another anime series. Uh, and I was trying, my original idea was, I do kind of one lowbrow thing and one educational thing. Uh, you know, I wanted to watch a lot of documentaries in Japanese. I'm a bit of a history buff. So I uh, rented the collection of Asahi Newsreels series uh, and, and watched all these newsreels. You could rent the DVDs. All, all of these uh, reviews are previously on this channel somewhere, by the way. Um, after I watched the Asahi Newsreels, I was looking for another documentary, but there, there actually were, were no more documentary series in the, my local DVD rental shop. Uh, so I wandered over to the historical drama section. Now, uh, the, these historical dramas are interesting. I'll, I'll give a bit of a background on this. It's done by NHK. Uh, NHK is the publicly funded broadcast uh, channel in Japan. So it would be equivalent to PBS in America or BBC in Britain. Uh, you know, it's, it's funded through tax dollars and they do a lot of educational, well, they do a lot of stuff, but educational programming among them. Now, NHK has this tradition, which apparently goes all the way back to 1960, excuse me. Every year, they pick one either historical event or historical figure and they make a TV series out of their lives and they air one episode every week. Um, which, which is uh, quite a schedule, although I think, I think back in the day this used to be more common than it is now, right? Like nowadays, like HBO will release a season and it will only be 10 episodes. But I think historically TV seasons used to be longer. Anyways, whatever, NHK does one episode a week. And so by the end of the year, they've worked their way through a whole, I think sometimes it's a biography of a figure, sometimes it's an event, sometimes it's, they, they do various things. And then the next year they start something new, which, you know, I'm a history nerd. I thought this is the coolest idea ever. Like I, I wish uh, the US would do this, right? I mean, imagine if PBS or, I mean, it doesn't matter who does it, but uh, somebody, somebody sets this up and every year we get, you know, one episode a week of one historical drama about some aspect of US history. Then they do a different one every year. I mean, we've got some catching up to do before we catch up to Japan who has been doing this since 1960. But anyways, it's a cool idea. So, uh, my knowledge of Japanese history is limited. Uh, I've read a handful of books, I've reviewed them on this channel, but I, I really don't know stuff in depth. So uh, when I was there, I saw a series on the Shinsengumi, and I thought, ah, I know that. I know who the Shinsengumi are. So I decided to check out the series. Uh, now, 
my girlfriend, uh, when, when, uh, at the time, when, when she noticed I was uh, watching the Shinsengumi series, she said, you are really getting to be a Shinsengumi nut, aren't you? Because, uh, yeah, I, I've been through the, a few things now with the Shinsengumi. I, I didn't know at all who they were at first. And then a student uh, encouraged me to watch a, a movie about them, the, the, you know, a historical drama movie called When the Last Sword is Drawn. And then that piqued my interest, and then I found a book on them uh, in English in the bookstores called, uh, what was it called, Shinsengumi, The Shogun's Last Samurai Corps by Romulus Hillsbro. Uh, and then I watched another movie on them called Gohato, which, which is an interesting one. I've, I've reviewed all of these before on this channel. Um, so it was, it was kind of the case of one thing led to another, led to another. Um, you, you know, sometimes when you know a little bit about a historical period, uh, it becomes more interesting because you, you kind of build in your knowledge and, and build up those details. Right, I suppose I should give a brief background for anyone not familiar with the Shinsengumi. So uh, I'm, I'm not going to get in depth here, but I guess the, the very brief synopsis is that there was a period of civil unrest in the 1860s and 1870s in Japan, kind of uh, right before the Meiji Restoration or the events leading up to the Meiji Restoration. So it, we call it the Meiji Restoration, but it's kind of almost like a mini revolution. Uh, the, the Shogun had been in power in Tokyo for about 200 years or something, 200 and some years, and the emperor, uh, was not actually in power. The emperor was kind of relegated back to Kyoto or something, but the uh, emperor didn't really have any power. But there was a big movement uh, to take power away from the shogun and bring it to the emperor. Now, the shogun was up in Tokyo, but a lot of these revolutionaries or intellectuals or whatever were operating down in Kyoto. So the Shogun's, uh, I don't think it was a shogun himself, I don't remember, this somebody organized this police force which was sent down from Edo, uh, Edo being the historic name for Tokyo, down to Kyoto and they were kind of to police the, the, the streets of Kyoto which were becoming increasingly lawless or which the shogun was losing control over. And so that was the Shinsengumi that went down there. Uh, and they had a number of legendary exploits uh, down in Kyoto. They, they got into a number of, uh, they, they put down like a couple conspiracies or mini uprisings and then got into a number of sword fights with, with uh, various factions uh, and, and became the stuff of legend. If, if you read, if you find any book about them, the, 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 there was some interesting stuff there. I don't, you know, the Shinsengumi, they're, they're, they weren't nice people, to put it mildly. They were, yeah, they, they, they were samurai and they had the code of, code of honor and everything like that, but they were bloodthirsty. Uh, and as you read through their, the, the history of them, it's apparent that they were on a power trip uh, when they were down there. So I don't really particularly admire the Shinsengumi, but it's interesting and the, the, the more, the broader historical period when they were uh, down there, when they were active, this period leading up to the Meiji Restoration, I find quite interesting. So, uh, in, in spite of the fact that my girlfriend was worried I was becoming a Shinsengumi nut at the time, I, I really wasn't. It was just, I wanted to watch one of these series and this was something I was already familiar with anyways. And of course, when you're watching something in a second language, because this was all in Japanese, uh, it, it helps to be familiar with it. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, this may be of only interest to me, but I'll, I'll talk a little bit linguistically about the Japanese challenge of this. So this was about after eight years of living in Japan. Um, I never became fluent in Japanese. Well, fluent is... Flu what does fluent mean, huh? I, I never became perfect in Japanese. I was conversational. Uh, I was able to watch some Japanese media and understand it. Uh, this was a samurai drama, which means they spent a lot of time talking in kind of older samurai words and kind of more formal style. But uh, for whatever reason, I guess because it was an NHK drama and maybe because it was aimed at families and kids and stuff like that, the, the, uh, the actors spoke very 
slowly and clearly, and everything was so clearly enunciated, uh, that aside from like uh, a, a few archaic words, and it actually wasn't too bad, I felt like I pretty much understood this perfectly. I felt like I got all the main plot points. Although, as always, take my opinion with a grain of salt because I could have missed something. Um, and as I watched this drama, I reread uh, that uh, volume of the Shinsengu sorry, that history of the Shinsengumi I had. Shinsengumi, the, the Last Samurai Corps by Ramios Hillsborough. And I use that both to help me understand kind of any time I would miss something in Japanese. I, I could understand it because like I knew what the history was going. And, but I was also able to use that as a way to fact check uh, this documentary. Sorry, not documentary, this drama. So that I, I knew when they were sticking to the real history and when they weren't. Now, uh, before I even started watching this, my, uh, my Japanese girlfriend gave me a heads up. She said, uh, you're not going to like this. Uh, she said, you know, whenever you watch anything historical and you always complain about all the stuff they've got wrong, which is kind of true. Yeah, guilty. She said they, 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 they adjust so much. She said, it's not a history, it's a drama. And they, they're going to change everything around. Which surprised me a little bit because, you know, I, you know NHK, right? They're the, they're the publicly funded broadcasting uh, corporation in Japan, right? They're supposed to be educational. Uh, but they, they, they did. They totally changed a whole bunch of stuff around. And uh, it was interesting to watch this while reading the book. That being said, uh, I only really read the one book. So, you know, I hate to be the guy who reads one book on a subject and then pretends he's an expert. But I guess that's what I'm doing today. Uh, I, I'm, I'm calling myself an expert because I read one book on the Shinsengumi. And I don't know, if, if Romulus Hillsborough got anything wrong, uh, then my analysis is also going to be wrong as well. Uh, so, right, where to begin with this? Um, this is a 50-hour drama. There are 52 weeks in a year. I'm not sure whatever happened to the last two weeks. I guess maybe the last two weeks of December or something they take off. And then actually there was a special, an hour and a half special that got made a couple years ago that kind of gave an epilogue on some of the characters. And that was also my DVD store, so I rented that as well. So, right, needless to say, I sunk an incredible amount of time into watching this, and I'm not in entirely sure that was time well spent, to be honest, because, uh, you know, that's like a whole working week plus some of, of watching this stupid drama. Um, but again, I was at the time uh, trying to study Japanese, so it was very good Japanese input, and I, I guess that's how I justify it. But uh, now I'll review it for you so that you don't have to watch it. Um, or, I, yeah, or I don't know, you, you can watch it if you want. Um, yeah, but it is 50 hours of content, so recognize that I can't possibly talk about everything. I'm just going to skim over the main stuff briefly. Uh, there, there's just so many things I'm not going to talk about. Uh, so the... Talking about the historical accuracy of this, there are a number of things that they change around or gloss over in this historical drama. But uh, on the plus side, 50 hours allows them time to get into stuff, right? You know, you know when you watch a Hollywood uh, history drama and uh, you, you read about the historical accuracy of it and you're like, well, this got cut for time and this got cut for time and these two this character was actually a composite of three people because we didn't have time to introduce them. Uh, you know, whenever you condense history down to two hours, uh, you're cutting out so much stuff. Whereas if you have 50 hours to play with, you can get into all that stuff. And they do get into all of it. In fact, you almost get the impression that 50 hours was much more time than they actually needed. Because this starts out so slow. It takes forever before the Shinsengumi even gets formed. I mean, we are like well over 10 hours into this. We're, we're like a, a quarter of the way through the drama before we even have the beginning of the Shinsengumi. Uh, so, uh, that being said, the ending parts do get a little bit rushed. So I almost got the impression 
that I don't know, you, you know, an episode a week, maybe they're kind of writing as they go, maybe the writers mismanaged how much time they were gonna have, stuff like that. But it, yeah, it starts off uh, so incredibly slow. Uh, we, we start off with Kondo Isami, uh, and uh, sorry, Hijikata Toshizo, uh, who are the two people who have become the main people of the Shinsengumi. Uh, Kondo Isami is the leader of the Shinsengumi, Hijikata Toshizo is, the, is his uh, second hand man, his, his right hand man. Story starts off all the way back in 1853. Uh, which is when Matthew Perry and his black ships uh, come off the coast of Japan, which uh, is a, a Matthew Perry was an American, uh, so this was the American Navy. This is a minor event in American history, but this was a huge event in Japanese history because uh, this is what kind of kicked off all the reformations in Japan. Uh, it it it. Um, Matthew Perry, Japan had been closed off to the outside world. Uh, Matthew Perry came in with his gunships and essentially forced Japan to open up, which kicked off uh, a couple of different trends in Japan over like the next 20 or 30 years. One is uh, this huge xenophobia about all these foreign barbarians coming into Japan. Uh, but the other was this huge desire to learn from the Western barbarians uh, and to adapt their methods and their technology and their systems because there's this realization that oh my God, Japan is centuries behind the rest of the world uh, and is, is in danger of being colonized by the Westerners if they don't modernize quickly. Um, so as far as I can tell, I, I'm relatively sure, Kondo Isami and Hijigata Toshizo had nothing to do with this historical event, but they go out and see uh, the black ships, and they go along with uh, figures like Sakuma Shozan, Sakamoto Ryoma, Katsura Kogoro, uh, all three of whom are going to go on to be leading figures in the Meiji rest Restoration. Uh, so I think that's a little bit, I, I don't think the five of them were really buddy buddies as they are in this drama, but, but that's where you are. Uh, by the way, a couple of apologies. First of all, the, the Japanese names uh, can be last name first or first name first, depending on whether you're going the Japanese style or the American style. So Sakamoto Ryoma is Ryoma Sakamoto in, in Japan. Uh, apologies if I get confused and jump back and forth in, this, in the review. Uh, also, again, this is uh, one of my old reviews, so uh, hopefully I'm not going to name mess up the names. There was a period in time about 10 years ago when these names rolled much easier off my tongue than they do now after I just got done sitting through 50 hours of this. Uh, so from that moment onwards, uh, there's it's kind of this slow plod through the major events in history in which Kondo Isami and Hijigata Toshizo are kind of showing up in the background at all these major events in history. Uh, you, it, it's kind of like Forrest Gump. Maybe that's a bit of a dated example at this point, but you know how the Forrest Gump movie, they, they insert him into all these major historical events that he wasn't actually really in. Uh, yeah, I think that's what's going on here. Uh, so they're randomly popping up at key moments. For example, one, one example among it, many, kind of in the first 10 episodes, is uh, the Americans and the British and kind of the Europeans have forced their way into Japan. The Japanese aren't always happy about this, so there's an American diplomat called Henry Conrad Johannes Huxen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. He was actually Dutch-American, so, so kind of a Dutch name. So uh, w one of the... This, some of the samurai who are not happy about the foreigners in Japan plotted to assassinate him and then actually did assassinate him. That, now this was actually interesting because I was watching this uh, on the, the NHK drama and I thought, uh-huh, interesting, I never heard about that before. Uh, and then I, you know, I go to search it on Wikipedia or something and there was nothing on Wikipedia. So it's this... Um, uh, yes, let me qualify that actually. There was nothing on Wikipedia at the time. This was back in 2008. Uh, before turning on the camera, I was just checking again. And actually there is a Wikipedia article now, I think so around 2012 or something, somebody updated it. 
But, you know, it's just one of those interesting little bits of history. And, and you know, this guy was an American diplomat, so uh, something, you know, a, a connection with Americans, something maybe that should be in American history uh, as well. And, and just uh, one of these little historical tidbits that you would never even know about, uh, and that was not even on Wikipedia at the time. So, uh, in the drama, Kando Isami and Hijikata Toshizo uh, are, become friends with this guy and they try to stop the assassination and they're not actually successful. Yeah, this drama gets really cheesy at points and there is a cheesy, really cheesy part here uh, with, with uh, this diplomat, the American diplomat, Hyukson. Uh, at one point, he's getting warned that it, it, there's an assassination plot against him. And he goes into this long speech about something along the lines of, you know, maybe I might die here in Japan, but I have no regrets. Japan was such a wonderful country that it's just been my pleasure to, to th think what, how privileged I have been to experience such a wonderful country. Even if they kill me, it's all right. And I'm watching this and I'm thinking, oh boy, he did not say that. You know, I, I, be I bet you $100 he did not say that. Uh, so it just seemed like one of these stupid patriotic things that, that was getting inserted here and because it was a Japanese drama that Japanese people were making. They, they do this periodically in Japanese TV. I know, American TV is ten times worse. Uh, so I, 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 I hope I'm not implying that this is only Japan, but you know, this is one of those things you put up with when you watch Japanese TV. Um, Although, actually, I was just checking Wikipedia, and according to Wikipedia, he did actually have, like, journals of his time in Japan that, ha that are available to the public. So, knock on wood, hopefully there's nothing about that, like, in his journal, or I'm going to owe somebody a hundred bucks if somebody takes me up on that. It's not a real offer. That was a uh, rhetorical thing when I said I, I bet a hundred bucks on it. Uh... Yeah, so there's a whole bunch of other things that go on. The Shogun Regent E. Naosuke is assassinated by Imperial Loyalists. That, that's also uh, in kind of the, the beginning episodes before the Shin Singumi is formed. Uh, Shin Singumi also befriends key Meiji Restoration figures like Sakamoto Ryoma. Uh, Katsuro Kogoro, as I mentioned above. And all this time, the Kondo Isami's fencing school is largely getting bigger and bigger. And this is going to be the core uh, group of the Shinsengumi who end up being in the Kondo Isami's fencing school. Now, what, what's interesting about this, in real life, the Shinsengumi were bloodthirsty and they were incredibly arrogant. Uh, and, you know, xenophobic and closed-minded and, and pretty right-wing, uh, according to the, the history I read. Uh, what's interesting about this NHK uh, drama is that they're just portrayed as, like, the nicest guys ever, and they're so friendly, and they don't want to kill anyone. And In fact, there's, uh, for, for many, much of the beginning episodes, Kondo Isami refuses to kill someone. And then he actually, he has to kill somebody to save his friend and he's just filled with remorse. And I'm watching this and I'm like, this is not the Shin Singumi. I mean, these guys, these guys were not afraid of killing someone. So they're, they're really doing a number to, to rewrite history to make these guys a lot more likable than they were. Now, I'm not entirely sure what's going on here because, uh, you, you know, like I'm not an expert. So like if somebody else knows more than I do, feel free to chime in. Um, the, there was uh, one of the books I previously reviewed on this uh, channel, A Hundred Years of Japanese Film by Donald Ritchie. He mentions in that specifically, he complains that the Shinsengumi were a pro-government army uh, that the Japanese media, for whatever reason, usually portrays as a benevolent band of Boy Scouts. I, I almost suspect Donald Ritchie had this exact series in mind because, boy, are, are, is this group a benevolent band of Boy Scouts. I mean, they, 
They help old women clean their houses. They make toys for young children. They play with the young children. They uh, protect young maidens. Uh, they, they, they're just so goody two-shoes in here, which is not the way they were in real life. Don, Donald Ritchie seems to be implying that this is a, some sort of whitewashing of history by Japanese media, and maybe it is. Um, but the thing, and again, I, I, th I say this as somebody who's not an expert, the, the, the thing that gets me is when you talk about modern right wing nationalism in Japan, right? All the stuff that led up to World War II and the, the awful stuff that happened then, and to, to the extent there's still like a, a right wing in Japan, they're all about the emperor worship, right? Uh, right wing national, uh, Japanese nationalism goes back to the emperor. The Shinsengumi were on the other side of that history. They were on the side of the shogun, not the emperor. So right-wing nationalism in Japan goes back to when the emperor was restored in the Meiji Restoration. So, is, is, there, is there an advantage in, por in portraying the Shinsengumi as, as uh, better than they are in terms of Japanese politics or, or right-wing nationalism? I'm not sure they are. I mean, in fact, to me it seems, if you were to put this in American terms, you know, like the Shinsengumi would be like British loyalists during the American Revolution. You know, the people who were fighting for King George instead of fighting with George Washington. Maybe that analogy is a stretch, but I, I, I don't know. I don't think there's a political agenda here. I, my best guess is that they've got 50 episodes spread out throughout the year, and they want people to just keep coming back week after week. And so they don't want to make the Shin Sengumi uh, out like a, a, a bunch of bloodthirsty thugs, because then who's going to watch 50 episodes? They want to make the Shin Sengumi out as very sympathetic figures. That and also apparently these NHK historical dramas are aimed more at families. So I, I think that's, an, that's another thing they're doing. Uh, all that being said, uh, you know, somebody let me know if, if somebody has more insight into Japanese culture or politics than I do. But yeah, they, they even go so far as Kondo Isami, who was this, you know, really bloodthirsty guy in real life, is portrayed by a boy band pop star in Japan, uh, Shingo Katari uh, of the, the pop group SMAP, which I don't know if SMAP is still popular. I've kind of lost touch with Japan over the years, but when, when I was in Japan in, in the early 2000s, SMAP was like huge. They were like... The, you know, the Backstreet Boys or NSYNC or uh, what are kids listening today? Justin Bieber, you know, he, he, they, the, they were like the big pop idols and, and very kind of, you know, non-threatening and cutesy, kind of like the monkeys or whatever. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, 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 it's a very odd casting choice to have him. But, he, you know, he plays Kondo Isami as like this, this lovable person throughout. Uh, now, I'm reading the history of the Shin Singumi while I watch this. So, like, I know all the terrible stuff that's coming up where the Shin Singumi are going to kill a bunch of people. And I keep thinking to myself, okay, now how are they going to spin this to make it look like the Shin Singumi really did not want to kill all these people, but they had to because their hand was forced? And sure enough, they find some way to spin it each time. Now, to their credit, this drama never omits anything. So they don't cut out any of the more problematic parts of uh, Shin Singumi history. They, uh, and again, this is maybe has to do with having 50 hours to fill. But they just find some way to spin it each time. Now, what happens as you go on in the Shin Singumi, Shin Singumi history is they begin to uh, factionalize and fight among themselves. And then they end up like killing each other. Or in some cases, uh, some of the members are ordered to commit seppuku, which is, you know, this ritualistic suicide, which uh, samurai sometimes did because they had to maintain their honor. But uh, you get the impression with the Shin Singumi history, more often than not, they were ordered to do it. And this was like, you know, yeah, you, you had to do this or it would be done for you type thing. So, so anyways, uh, I'm watching, I'm like, okay. Now, it's one thing to have, like, the Shin Singumi against the world, but when Shin Singumi start killing Shin Singumi, how are they going to spin that? And, and that was interesting to see how they spent that. So, you, you know, in a way, it kind of increased the interest of the series 
uh, knowing that they had a, a narrative agenda that they were pushing and, and seeing how they would, in each case, massage the real history into it. Um, but yeah, the, the, the movie takes the, sorry, the document, the drama series takes the side of Kondo Isami. So even after the Shinsengumi factionalizes, uh, is always Kondo Isami's faction, which is presented the most uh, sympathetically. Uh, in addition to this, like I said before, uh, other major figures of the Meiji Restoration 